Welcome to today's episode of the podcast with Dania from Food for Real. That's Food for Real on Instagram. She has over 21,000, almost 22,000. So if you're listening to this, get her to 22,000 followers because she's almost there. That's a big accomplishment. So she is a food vlogger that started in Philadelphia and now moved to the Coachella Valley, which she is showcasing the local food and showing different foods from around the valley so definitely give her a follow i will put the links in the description in this episode we talk about her journey of starting a food page what she's learned her favorite restaurants in the coachella valley and just an overall great person so hopefully you guys enjoy this episode now a quick word from our sponsor this video is sponsored by audible if you've never signed up through audible you can literally sign up right now using the link in the description or go to audibletrial.com slash warm72, W-O-R-M-7-2, and you will help support this channel. We do get a commission from anybody that signs up. So you could sign up, download a free book, listen to that book, and cancel without paying a single dime, and you will help support the channel. So if you guys feeling generous, check out the link in the description. This video is also sponsored by Tile760 on Instagram. It's a tile company servicing all Southern California from San Diego to Los Angeles to the Coachella Valley, anywhere in Southern California, any gra granite, tile, and marble services. So thank you to our sponsors. And here's our episode with Dania from Food For Real. Deidre makes these, her Instagram and business is The Wise Owl. The Wise Owl. And she provides these donuts like to all of Coachella Valley. Um, and she just like, she's a nutritionist too, so um, she wants to provide like healthier option options, treats yeah. for people. So this one's actually gluten free, and these are not gluten free, but they're all vegan. What's gluten? I always had a question about that. What is gluten? Yeah, what is that? It's like a, an element in the wheat or like grain that just some people have an allergy to. So this, these ones she used like regular wheat flour and um, this one to make it gluten free she used like almond flour and like um, you can use oat flour yeah. so people with the intolerance can have oh. the gluten free ones. More natural stuff that's exactly. going to be better for you. Yeah, yes. so these ones are healthier um, but she still like worked hard to make them still taste like a donut and they look great. <laughs> yeah, at least aesthetically they look really good. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> they might not taste like a donut that we're used to, like a Krispy Kreme, but sometimes, oh, since I love donuts so much, it's nice to have like a clear option so that you're I can. Not, you're not going to regret it when you eat four of these versus four of the regular. Exactly. Right. Well, maybe four is a bit much, but <laughs> <laughs> still, you'll feel a little better about it. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, Tell us a bit about yourself for those people who don't know who you are. Sure. Yeah, so I'm Food For Real. I do a food vlog slash Instagram. Um, I started it in Philadelphia when I moved there from Chicago because the local food scene was just, there were so many options and it was just blossoming and I was going out to eat a lot anyways. I just grew up loving food and going out to eat with my family so I thought why not document everything yeah. and just my Instagram started from there. And that's kind of how I get to know a city, a new city, is through the food. Through the food? Yeah, and also, like, I'm not good with directions, so <laughs> I will, like, pinpoint things by, like, if it's near a restaurant or, like, a certain oh, okay. area. Yeah, a lot of so, people, they, they do stuff like that yeah. just because it's easier. Yeah. Um, so you, you start in Philadelphia? Yeah. Or you start in Chicago and then move I'm to I'm from Chicago, so that's then, where I grew oh. up, like, eating and getting in love with food, you started and food different cultures. Different. And then when I moved to Philly... That's where I started the blog. And do you, did you um, stick to the specific type of food, or were you just trying any, anything you were going to? Everything, no discrimination. <laughs> <laughs> but we really like to focus on local food and what like makes a city oh. a city through its food. So yeah, Philadelphia so, uh, has like such a pride. I don't know if you know people from Philly. Or, I know they're super passionate about sports. Yes, like the thing. I know, yes. Like, they, they, they're, they're, on Twitter, they call them like the most toxic fans. Yes, so. they are crazy fans. So yeah. imagine that in the city. Yeah. They just have pride for everything they do. And so it was cool to get to know the city that way um, because they have traditions in their food as well. So they yeah. have traditions from like Amish and Dutch people. So they have really good like donuts, Amish donuts and Amish baked treats and something called um, Scrapple, which yeah. is an Amish 
treat an Amish breakfast like meat, and it's like yeah. a mixture of all these meats, and it's really weird, but it's so good. Yeah. It's crackle. I don't you probably never heard I of never it. Heard yeah. Of it. <laughs> <laughs> because it's so filly. And um, then they have cheese steaks. Tacos. <laughs> uh, tacos is great. Um, cheese steaks, and they do roast pork, and just like yeah, such a. And hoagies, just so many like really Philly things. Yeah. Uh, so we like to like kind of uncover those and hit up like the little local shops that. So you just focus on local businesses. You don't go with big chains. When I was in Philly, I, it, my food, my handle on Instagram is Philly Food for Real. So I only did Philly, and I travel a lot too. But I didn't document any of that. I just wanted to focus on strictly Philly. Yeah. So that's where I built up our thing, yeah, our both, audience. Both and, yeah, exactly. And then when we moved to here, I was like, oh shoot, what do I do? <laughs> I'm not in Philly anymore. So I just changed the name to Food for Real so that it's more well, encompassing. Yeah. Um, which is kind of nice too because I do travel a lot. So I like to still find the local places, but in any of the different, cities. Different that, cities. Yeah, yeah. Have you had? Have you tried like? What kind of food do you like now that you live in the valley? Well, definitely. That you didn't have in Philly. Uh, definitely, the Mexican food is top notch here. Yeah. Philly have good Mexican food, but I just think in general, California, the West Coast does Mexican food better than the East Coast. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I've been definitely exposed to a lot of Mexican food that's really good. Uh, a lot of healthier food out here, too, like way more vegan options, just like more plant based stuff, salads, and like um, the produce out here is amazing. So that's kind of been a switch, which is also not bad because in Philly they do a lot of like heavy, meaty, cheesy yeah, bread greasy. things. Yeah, <laughs> and here it's a, little, a bit more lighter. And yeah, here, I mean, California just the, like they said, the melting pot. So yeah. Like you have every option that you could get here. So exactly. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Like, what's yeah. your favorite restaurant that you've tried in the Valley? What do you, are you, you, hmm. you know, you're not biased. It's a hard question because. Something that stood out to you. Yeah, well, recently I, I tried. Um, it's called the Pink Cabana inside the Sands Hotel in La Quinta. Mm -hmm. My, I had a five-year work anniversary, so they brought me a special lunch. So I checked out the Pink Cabana, and that food was really good. I feel like it was a lot more elevated or upscale than what than other restaurants I've tried in the yeah. Valley. Um, and it was just fresh, really good food. I had a, a beet salad that, like um, almond butter as like the base. Yeah. And it almost tasted like it was a baklava filling if you've ever had that pastry. I'm not crazy. familiar with crazy foods like it's Yeah, <laughs> and that's a, it's a Greek pastry, but it was like in the bottom of a salad and then you like mix it all together and it just like made a dressing almost with beets and like fresh produce. So that was really, really good. And uh, recently tried uh, Tranvia in Coachella and that was really good. Because yeah. they make like their flour and corn tortillas fresh, like home home style. Yeah, yeah. and I also went to one stop shop. You oh, told yeah. me to go there. Yeah, it was awesome. Oh yeah, the best little stop. I love those kind of places too, where it's just like little. No, you don't know what it is from outside, and then you go in and you try the food, and it's like mind blowing. Yeah, that was really good. Yeah, the good tacos stop. and quesadillas uh, there. What's uh, so right now? Okay, I've seen that you put a lot of work into your stories. Like you, mm -hmm. you make them really. I'm trying. Really, really good. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> have you seen, have you seen uh, a difference from trying harder on your story that brings in more engagement towards your posts? Yeah, yeah. I think I think Instagram really likes or yeah. kind of makes your engagement higher if you do more videos, yeah, stories. So. Even on my posts, I've been trying to do videos and IG TV. Mm -hmm. um, so I've definitely been noticing a higher engagement from just like keeping up trying to do stuff every day yeah. and videos so definitely that definitely um, ups my engagement um, yeah, do you have like a goal for like your Instagram because it's oh, yeah. I guess it's, yeah, it's your hobby because you love food and mm -hmm. it's something you're already doing but mm -hmm. you could look at it as a business perspective yeah. too, so. I would love to turn it into a business somehow I, I'm not really fully there yet yeah. I'm just still having fun with it and still just doing what I would have done Regardless, yeah. yeah. You're still trying food because, I mean, that's something you want to try either way. It's exactly. Food. Exactly. But, you know, I, I do love promoting local businesses, so I do that, like, anyways. But if, you know, if they wanted to work with me in, in a more specific way where they invite me in and I take, like, photos of maybe a menu or... Um, yeah, just like if they want to work directly, I'd love to do that. Do you, do you, when you go to these places, do you hit them up before going to the place? Sometimes. Do you sometimes, get free food and stuff? Sometimes, yes. But 
but I don't um, reach out and say like, hey, give me free food. Sometimes I'll just reach out and say, like, I'm, 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 I'm headed over, like, just want you know, I'm going to take some photos, I'll tag you on my stories. Um, some restaurants will, like, throw in, like, a, if, they, if I'm posting live in the restaurant, they'll, like, throw in a little appetizer or something, so it's not, like, a full free meal, and then, but some restaurants will specifically invite us in, and then I'll arrange with them to, to do, like, a shoot. Um, but yes, it, it depends. And right now, mostly I'm just going in to restaurants because I want to try them. You want to try new yeah. stuff. Yeah. Have you had? Have you inspired other people to start their own like Instagram um, food pages? Or? Yeah, I think I've been. I met some like new blogger friends out here who um, do like YouTube and like more lifestyle yeah. um, pages, and I've been noticing that they're incorporating food posts and like if they're at a restaurant, they're starting to incorporate that in their like stories and in their feeds, which is pretty cool because um, I think, I don't know, I guess it's from me inspiring them or just they want to like share another aspect yeah. to their it's, day. It's part of just being artistic because there are different types of art, like you could be artistic with your food because right. you also like you're, when you go to your Instagram feed oh. post, you guys have to check out your Instagram Thank feed <laughs> put a link to everything in the description. So. You make everything look really nice, and that's that's an art form too. Photography, styling. Right, right. So. We try, and I also think on the other way, like the lifestyle bloggers that I've met have influenced me to incorporate more of myself in it, and like maybe me working out as well because that's part of my day too. Yeah, I, mean, I can't just eat everything, <laughs> and you know, not I, I try to work out as well. So it's like part of my that's part of my day day to day routine. That's good so. that you're kind of incorporating yourself because. Um, if it's just the food, then people are not going to know who you are. Right. And that way you di differentiate yourself from other people because it's you. It's your right. Says, exactly. your face, your at these places. Right. And um, that's, that's good. Right. Right. It adds in another uh, personal Follow element that yeah. I think the follower, my followers want to see. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So I'm trying to shift a little bit more to not just food, but also art and local events. Have you tried YouTube or anything? Yeah, I've been um, trying to start the YouTube channel. I think I have like four videos and I think I have like five subscribers. <laughs> but um, it's fun. Uh, it's also confusing for me like to think about should I film this way for Instagram or should I film this way for YouTube? Yeah. So that's something that I've been like trying to think about and mainly I just film, you know, in the um, land portrait mode. Because yeah. it's for Instagram. Yeah, I mean, your your main focus should be Instagram. Right. But it's always good to reach out to different platforms. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. It's, it's good to all, spread yeah. yourself out. Yeah, and I think for like an event like this where it's food and art and yoga, three different things, like it would be a good fit for a YouTube channel. Yeah. Um, so I kind of today was trying to film, you know, in, in this way so that I can edit. You edit on the phone? Just on my phone. On the yeah. Insha or whatever. In shock. Yeah, 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 that's I what I use. It. <laughs> it's easy. I mean, it makes things a little bit easier. Yeah. So yeah, I do. I definitely like in shot for editing videos, and then for editing photos, I use Snapseed. Snapseed, yeah, I love Snapseed yeah. too. Yeah, we've been using Snapseed yeah. for a while. Um, yeah, I like to create like certain posts with Pix Art. Oh, I don't think I used that one. That one's it has like more little features to do. Oh, like um, you can crop out like. PNG oh. style things and like for YouTube. Yeah, I, I use some of my thumbnails like random oh, pictures. Cool, cool. But if it's just a photo for Instagram yeah. or just for something, mm -hmm. you want to just do the highlights and the shadows and all that stuff. Definitely Snapseed. That's mm -hmm. it. Like I've been wanting to make more tutorials just to help people out, just cool. like little apps that I use, things yeah. that I that have helped me because I've made a couple of tutorials on the phone and people that actually like, oh, thank you for showing me this, and I kind of want to make more because. Cool. What kind? Uh, I made an InShot tutorial oh, like, nice. on how to edit on your phone, cool. um, how to start a YouTube channel, just like cool. the basics. Especially if everyone has a phone now, it's like so easier Anyone to do it. Yeah. Right now, so I just want more people to create more content because it's, it's out there. Like you know, you just you're already living or doing cool things. Like you might as well get rewarded for it. For like, sure. And also keeps you creative. It keeps you. Like some people, because I, I record a lot, like I've been doing daily vlogs and nice. I've been doing like recording everywhere, and so it's like, hey, it's not recording everything, but I don't really record everything, so I I record like 10, 15 seconds, and then I might not even take up my time for like two hours, right, you know, like, right. you're just recording different aspects of your life, and you edit a little montage to get it two minutes, and right. it, it, it's, for me, the way I look at it is like, 
when you look back at a photo from like five years ago and then you're like, oh, I remember that day, that photo or what I was doing, but now you're going to have a two minute video kind of showing you more emotions, who you met, like kind of like mm -hmm. just an overall art. So that's, that's like my next thing, just trying to vlog. I'm, I'm going to start a separate vlogging channel. Oh, nice. And I'm going to be doing um, crazy, like those crazy vlogging lifestyles where they do crazy things. Like I'm just going to be documenting what I'm already doing. So nice. I don't want to have to create just document right and I think that's one of the biggest things yeah just document what you're doing right and that makes it easier I guess easier. because or even more natural because mm -hmm. you're just filming what you're already doing and you're not trying to think of like oh my god I have to create content and I have to do this and it, yeah you know it's not a stage it's just just doing what you're doing real life. Life. so some like I've been doing um, daily vlogs on Instagram some of them are like just me at work and then I do nothing else a day but just like that's what I did that I'm not gonna go Fake something that I didn't do. So um, I'm almost done with the three day vlog nice. challenge, yeah. and I was gonna make a video documenting my experience, and that's coming later this week. So that's cool. I'm excited. I, I just haven't posted them because I've been super busy. I haven't more recorded. I just need to finish with the posting. Nice. So, um, do you find people are like engaging with your? 30 day vlog challenge, or your um, they're engaging with yeah, it. Like there's certain people that watch them all, but um. I've actually lost some followers really? since I started because really? I know like there's certain people that don't care about that stuff, right. but I, I don't mind it. It's just, right. it's, it's kind of like um, for the people that actually care, it, it creates more value for them. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. that's pretty cool. Now again, I'm doing this as a challenge to document the, the experience with it. So once I'm done with this challenge, I'm I'm thinking of other challenges to do. So I don't know. Um, I don't know what I'm gonna do. Okay. One thing I've been thinking about is like going back to the vegan stuff. Yeah. Um, I kind of want to do like a 30 day vegan challenge. You should. That sounds weird because I'm always hating on vegans. Uh -huh. <laughs> I used to be that yeah. way too. But um, I think it would be a good, a good challenge for yeah. you just, just to clean, clean yourself. Yeah, yourself. absolutely. I met a, a vegan chef out here. Shout out to Chef Anthony Cruz. <laughs> he, um, he reversed, he had a lot of health problems and he reversed them all through his diet. So now he's full, fully vegan. Yeah. He doesn't have diabetes. Like it's just much healthier. Um, so I can put you in touch with him too if you do the 30 day challenge he can help you maybe come up with some recipes oh, okay, he makes like sure. really really good stuff um, I did like a cooking video with him he made us a vegan pad thai mm -hmm. and it was really good so when you like actually have ideas and like recipes it yeah. might not be as hard as you think it's definitely cheaper too because meat is expensive cheese is expensive um, yeah, and if you can like be creative with your ingredients and your recipes, it just it's like actually kind of fun and like just like opens up a whole other world of food that you may have never. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I love. I would love to see that. That'd be a cool one. I think I'm gonna do a 30 day uh, carnivore diet. First. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Whatever. You can do two extremes. Actually, follow a food Instagram. I think it's the Hunger Diaries, and she's been she does like each month a different diet. Yeah. to show her followers like what it does for her and like how much weight she's lost and how recipes. she feels yeah so like she did a keto she did a paleo she did a gluten free so each month is a different one wow. and then i think she'll like stick to one that she likes but she's just like trying out how they feel for her so you can yeah. do something like that too that's cool. i would be interested uh, to see I'm, I'm, I'm like that. that's cool but um, i've been trying to do a few more little challenges like that just nice. because it's it keeps you like i said it keeps you creative it keeps you changing right. Yeah, so it's that's, fun. That's cool. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I love um, when I get like restaurant opportunities or brands will send me food to feature. Yeah, like that just keeps me excited. It keeps yeah. me like um, like ready to film something. So that like, motivates you too. Yeah, exactly. You, you see, even in the smaller little brands, because mm -hmm. people only see the big celebrities getting the big brands, mm -hmm. but there's a ton of little small businesses that are reaching out. I've gotten like a couple of little things. Yeah. nothing too big, but. Yeah. Um, they, they, they're still reaching out right. and it, it motivates you like, oh yeah. if people are already sending me things I gotta work harder yeah. doing things that I love and then uh -huh. eventually yeah, exactly. just reap the rewards exactly. later yeah. just yeah. creative some mm -hmm. cool benefits to yeah, having a, a channel or a the blog. Well, and people like to see you do things, so mm -hmm. most people, 99.9% .9 of people don't do, so when you have a channel or a page like yours that you're creating and, and you you have actually great content which is like changing it up and trying new things, people are getting, they might not tell you directly that you're encouraging them to do or try new things, mm -hmm. but um, they they kind of watch you from the side and they get excited right. to, to see your posts and stuff. So. Yeah, I noticed after I did the cooking, the vegan pad thai cooking video with the chef, that um, people on my, like I saw on my personal Instagram that people were posting like a vegan pad thai recipe that they did 
So even if they don't realize it, I feel like you know it was kind of correlated to seeing yeah. that video and then them making it themselves. Subconsciously so, too. Right. Yeah. That was kind of cool to see. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's cool. It's you're, it's you're creating an impact even. It could be on a large scale, it could be a small scale, like, yeah. and what was cool about this stuff too is like you think, you might think this post or this is not going to do as good as the ones you think it's going to be good, but sometimes the YouTube or the Instagram algorithm picks it up. Right, exactly. You, and that's why you can't really like worry about it too much, because like you just, sometimes my posts don't do very well, they don't see people, it doesn't reach people, but at some point you just have to be like, this is what I want to post, Yeah. I don't care if it doesn't do well. But also still like trying to make sure you're producing like qual good quality content and like something that aligns with, and with your goals. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You're like you said the best, uh, the overall message. So maybe two posts don't do good, but then three of them will do really well. Right. And the next one does it. Just right. the whole collective at the end of the day, exactly. everything coming together. Like exactly. the post from now, six months from now, it's, it's only going to make you better because you did it. You learned from that experience. Right, exactly. exactly. And then just keep doing, keep going, keep doing. Exactly. Just thinking long term. Yeah. That's, that's, that's just what excites me. So yeah. I think we're uh, pretty much let's, wrapped this up. Oh, yeah, we're going to do let's some. Cheers. Our little mini mini donuts. These are mini chocolate or cha uh, vegan donuts. Yeah. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> you could eat it. <laughs> I already had a couple of them, so I took a bite. <laughs> I do want to try some of the other ones, too. <laughs> This is a glazed, regular glazed, um, if you want to try. <laughs> yeah. Still vegan. Not the gluten free one, though. Mm. It's cute. Wow. Mm -hmm. I like that one. Okay, now this is the gluten free chocolate. Okay. There you are. Thank you. I have easels too. It's a little more dense than the other ones, yeah. but still very tasty. It's good. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> Breakfast. <laughs> it's like a muffin almost. Yeah. It's delicious. Now maybe you could go vegan. Today's the start. <laughs> First meal is a vegan meal, so start my next challenge. <laughs> Well, yeah, well, thank you for coming on the podcast. And Thanks for having me. I know this is the second time we actually filmed this mm -hmm. because the first time we had technical difficulties. Mm -hmm. So um, I'll definitely put all your links in the description. Thank you. And then make sure you guys follow her. Thank and you. And I'll put the links to your YouTube channel too. Maybe yeah, some people sure. subscribe. Yeah, I'll sure. definitely subscribe to yours. Thank you. Thank you. And then, I'll, um, I'll likewise. And I'll uh, post on my Instagram too. When yeah. So, um, yeah. Well, thank you for coming on. Thank you. Definitely looking to come here more to the Local mm -hmm. Art Collective. Yeah. You should get some shots of this pretty cool space in, yeah. in the Indio Fashion Mall, or it's not called that it's anymore, the, it's Indio the Grand, Grand Market yeah, Place, place. Or whatever it's called now, yeah. the Indio Mall. This place is pretty cool, yeah. you know, I think it's a little gem inside this Yeah, this we, we, gotta, we gotta bring it back, we gotta bring it back, so mm -hmm. definitely um, looking forward to doing more work here, and yeah. hopefully make this uh, place where I do more podcasts, so yeah, that'd be sweet. Week, uh, we'll see each other in the yoga on Sundays. Yeah, it's like every month, every so month. Yeah. not every Sunday. So. Okay, once yeah. a month. Yeah. Okay, well, thank you. Thank yes, you for coming of on. course. <laughs> Definitely looking to work more. Thanks.